So community heritage and the spotlight, a play, a raspberry pie and pint-sized performers. <laughs> um, the project I'm going to talk about is called, was called Scotland's Urban Past and I was one of the training officers that worked on it uh, from 2014 to 2019. We were based at Historic Environment Scotland which is a totally different kind of clenched. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell. Um, bureaucracy, hierarchy, all of that, but they do lots of good things too. I'd like to tell you about some of the performance related project outcomes that came from this project where hopefully it fits in a little bit with what you're used to uh, doing. So, <coughs> Scotland's Urban Past, what was it? Well, I don't know if you can even read this, it's probably a bit too far away. It was a five year lottery funded, pro heritage lottery funded project. We worked over the five years with over 10,000 people. The main things to think about were the fact that it was a community-led project, so we were not heritage professionals going out and telling people what was important. We wanted to know from community groups all around Scotland, different ages, different backgrounds, from Shetland to Dumfries to the Western Isles to Aberdeen, what was important to them, and we wanted to support them with training and different skills and activities to help them celebrate and share stories and places that matter to them. And it really was about people telling their stories so that they could share what was important with the wider community and trying to make it as democratic as possible. Because so often heritage um, discussions, uh, deciding what buildings are important, gets decided by experts and not by people on the ground whose lives are every day affected by those decisions. Um, so in a sort of wider sexual move um, to try and engage with the public a lot more, um, which may or may not be successful. Um, so you're going to come across some of my scepticism and cynicism here. <laughs> um, th that was part of what, trying to get people more involved in taking care of the built environment uh, in their own way and on their own terms. Um, so that was kind of the output and, and we had exhibitions, we had lots of events um, and we worked with 60 different groups. 20 of those were uh, sort of traditional audiences, 20 were young people who were trying to get more involved in heritage and with the other 20 were new audiences, so people who'd never been involved with the heritage sector before, which was great and helped us with huge amounts of understanding different perspectives and thinking about identity and how the uh, built environment can affect who, your perspective of the world depending on what angle you're coming at it from. And that's something that the sector generally is not thinking about yet as much as it should. Um, so, um, getting into the, the, the midst of it, um, our strapline was your time, your street, your story. It was really putting the emphasis on people out there and trying to get them to think about what was important to them. So we had projects in towns like Oban, uh, where young people at primary school were trained up in oral history. That was one of the things that was really super popular, something that would get people um, immediately talking about their history and heritage. It didn't matter, you didn't need to go and read something in the library or you didn't have to have any special skills. You could just talk about your memories and children could be interviewing adults from their local mm -hmm. community. So we trained up folks in Oban, both English speakers and Gaelic speakers, um, tiny little primary fours to sevens uh, to ask questions about what it was like to grow up in Oban in the 1950s. And we had a professional filmer, Mikey McManus, come in and the interviews and there's a lovely video that you can get hold of that um, uh, tells the story of Open in the 1950s. Um, at Maygate in uh, Dunfermline there's a 16th century building called Abbott House and unfortunately it was closed down very quickly um, from being a community hub in uh, 2015 and this was a very urgent and emotional project and the group there asked us to come and help them again with oral history projects and we trained them up on how to do that and they actually made their own film about the significance of the building as a community hub, as a volunteering hub for them. It wasn't so much about the fact that it was a historic building and what the value of the historic building was, but it was more of a social value project. Um, and then, yeah, some, some lads wearing some marigolds cleaning a skateboard park. Um, this is the Benny or the Knightsridge Adventure Park in Livingston and this was a really interesting project because it challenged what for the sector heritage could mean. The skate park was only built in 2013. It was fundraised for 
co-designed and is maintained by a bunch of teenagers who attend the, the, the youth club. Um, and they wanted to tell their story through a film that we had a specialist come in and help with about their project. They're in a disadvantaged, allegedly, area. And it was trying to change perspe perspectives and perceptions of what young people in that area are, what they can do, and not just think about, oh, they're from West Lothian, that area where you know, people are not thought of in the best way by outsiders. So these boys <coughs> did, made a fantastic film. It's very humorous. It shows their energy and their passion and the care that they take of the, of the, um, of the skate park. And the funniest, I think the best thing about it was that some of our sexual colleagues were very indignant in a sort of Edith Evans in the importance of being earnest and went, a skate park! Um, so <laughs> we had lots of challenging discussions with some of our colleagues about what actually heritage should be and trying to change minds within our own sector and mindsets about what, what actually is relevant and what, what people should be allowed to consider heritage. Um, so the play, Citadel Arts in Meath in Edinburgh, we trained up uh, again with some research skills and they also had, took some funding from us to work with Joel Clifford, playwright, to develop local stories um, and memories from different uh, local communities into two different plays in 2016 um, as part of their regular series of events. So they had a, a project, uh, a play where they researched uh, the, the docks history and Laura Patterson there actually came and performed part of that play at our uh, exhibition launch last year and another one about a doctor in Leith who invented uh, uh, equipment that helped the treatment of cholera. So they were really important pieces of work that focused on local history, local memories and worked with local people to produce and direct them. Um, so again, bringing out the, the democratic aspect of it and also the local significance and value of those stories. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, well, does anybody actually know what a Raspberry Pi is? <laughs> so that's it, a bit of a fuzzy photo. Um, during Scotland's Urban Pass, we produced a lot of interactive events and uh, sort of extravaganzas, mm -hmm. heritage fairs at different sites. And we included things like your familiar costumed uh, reenactors. We had the Seal Knot Society who reenact uh, Cromwellian. Uh, Battles came along to uh, an event we staged at Air. Um, we had all sorts of singers and dancers and all sorts of things. We also had very innovative digital soundscapes and uh, media project or not media projections. And this event, which was a digital exhibition launched at halfway through the project, made use of uh, a multi-layered uh, kind of collaboration. So we worked with students at Leicester University who came up with a design for uh, a special sort of projector that would project images of project photographs. And they used the Raspberry Pi and an Arduino uh, heart monitor, which was connected up to the outside of the box. So when a person put their finger on the box, the pictures on the projector changed around in time with their heartbeat, or so was the, the, the whole thing anyway. I think too many people actually touched it. Um, and it was great, and you can, see, you can see their faces, they're not entirely convinced, <laughs> but it did work sometimes. It was great, and it was a great idea, and the idea was that the, the community projects all came from a real love of their own heritage, whatever that was. So the I Heart Heritage on the outside of the box was then um, interpreted in very many different ways to provide entertainment at the event, and a local group called SYNC and Why Dance Who Are Contemporary dance group based in Glasgow, came along and worked together and choreographed and wrote a new piece based on the theme of heartbeat and performed at the beginning of the event. So this was, we were introducing people to contemporary dance through heritage, which is fantastic. Um, and lots of people had never even experienced that before. So people got a really wide ranging experience who, who attended the event. And again, we're trying to challenge what people in the sector or traditional audiences thought that heritage could be and who should be involved. Um, so our pint-sized performers, we worked with lots of young people from aged five upwards um, and they did all sorts of creative productions and here up in Stonehaven in Aberdeenshire, a group of home ed kids wanted to investigate the history of the town that they all live near Stonehaven and its fishing history. So we did lots of different traditional kinds of um, training with them to investigate old photographs and old maps 
go out and take photographs of buildings around the town and around the harbour and then investigate stories of them. Then they went away, did lots of homework, and then a few months later they came back and working with local squid production, Squidworks Productions, they created a puppet show on the history of fishing in Stonehaven. Um, quite me uh, piecemeal and <laughs> a bit makeshift with their scenery, but it was all just put on in the local scout hall, um, and they, 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 they're some of the little performers, and they're very sweet. And you can see the whole film on YouTube. And finally, back in Edinburgh, um, we worked with Cannon Gate Youth and did two projects, one with their youngest group, aged five to seven, and their slightly older ones. Uh, the older ones wanted to show off their area of Edinburgh around the Pleasance, Hollywood, and Dumby Dykes, where they all live. And to, to do that, they decided on a tour. That's really popular in tourism in Edinburgh, and of course they needed to have a ghost part in the tour, because that's super popular in Edinburgh. So we had a we did some training around historical stories and resources. They went out and again took photographs. It's all getting ha really hands-on kind of activities. We wanted people to go out and investigate, be urban detectives. Um, and then we did lots of training. They got to watch horrible histories, so that think about how can you make your story interesting and fun and how are different people doing this. They, they made their own characters in clay and in plasticine, and we'd storyboarded up the, 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 the film for them. Tony was the tour guide here on the right hand side and over the course of a few days, very different weather and yes it did rain quite a lot so the children got to learn about how continuity can be <laughs> affected by the weather when you're working to a tight schedule. Um, they, they ran a whole tour around um, certain parts of Edinburgh, it was filmed and you can see that on YouTube as well and there's the ghostly bit at the end in the, in the Canongate graveyard where these two girls on the left turn out to be ghosts. Mm -hmm. And it's all like visual and sound effects as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. Yeah, so we have, uh, the project is over now. I could tell you, I could stand here all day and tell you about it. Because I really loved doing it. I really loved engaging with communities and finding out what was important to people in different parts of the country. Um, there's a book, a digital book online. You can have a look at our training resources and have a look at the HES, Historic Environment Scotland. Uh, YouTube page and you can find a playlist with all the Scotland's mm -hmm. past films. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.